Well, hi, y'all. It's Trixie. I can't believe we're at part eight. If you're just joining us, go back to part one to get started because you have missed a lot of good stuff. Well, let's jump right in and get going. Hello? Yeah, it's Mr. Bentley. It seems like uh, you were in close to the phone. Uh, no, no I, don't, I don't always carry it on me, but it's usually where I can hear it. Okay, well, Hal is not home. Hal is at work. So even if you drive down there, he's not going to be home because he's working at the financial department. All right? And uh, I, spoke with, I spoke with the third state attorney general, and they're saying that if... if you want me to be released today, what you could do. Are you listening carefully? Yes. Yes. They're saying if you want me to be released and come to you today, all you have to do is take the check to the post office and mail it off in overnight mail. They said that once you mail it in overnight mail, you're going to get a tracking number. You call me, give me that tracking number, and I will present it to them, and they will have me released. All right. So if you want me there today, you can do that. Is it possible for you to do that? Well, the more I I think about it, the more I think I would like to just drive it down there. Maybe I could leave it on his porch or something. No, you can't. You, you, the company doesn't work that way, sweetie. That That's not normal. The company doesn't work that way. I'm trying to have you release from, uh, have me release from the airport so I can be at your location. So the state attorney general told me that if you take the check to the post office and mail it off in overnight mail, you're going to get back a tracking number. Once you give me that tracking number, I could present it to them and I will be released immediately. All right. So if you want me to be there today, that's what you can do. All right. Um, well, what's his, what's his, uh, what's the audience office? I, mean, I could take it to the office. That makes more sense than taking it to his home. Pardon um, me? What's the finance office? That makes more sense if I take it there than taking it to his home. That's what I'm saying to you, sweetie. That we have the company has policy that we have to follow. I can't just have you driving all over the place. All right, we have a specific way of how we get things done for security. So all you have to go to the post office, mail it an overnight mail. Give me the tracking number. I could be released. I know the reason why uh, you're think you're you're thinking that you know this is not for real and stuff like that, and that's why you're saying all of. But this is 100% authentic and guaranteed. I turned a lot of people into a full-time millionaire. You're not the first person that I'm going to deliver a product. Right, but I'm not, right. so I'm, I'm, I don't know how good I feel. I don't know how good I feel about Pardon sending me? it to somebody's house. What's the office address? Sweetie, you have to try and understand what I'm saying to you. Everything is okay. That is how the business do their uh, transaction. All right. So you don't have to worry about it. All right. Once you get back the tracking number from the post office, you can make some cookies and I will be on my way. All right. Well, so I want to send it to a business. Follow my instructions. I want to send it to a business address, not a somebody's home address down there in the villages. All right, hold on. Hello, ma'am. Yes, hello. 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 How are you doing? This is Mr. Brock. Mr. Who? This is Mr. Broccoli. Mr. Brockwurst. Who? Broccoli. I'm one of the men. Broccoli? Mr. Broccoli. Broccoli. Yeah, this is Mr. Broccoli. Okay. Yes, ma'am. How are you? Fine. All right, I can see that or uh, the, um, the uh, company and the department is having some uh, slight difficulties. We do understand in the procedure here. Are you like the head? What? Hello. Uh, this is Mr. Broccoli. Yes, sir. I, I don't know what connected. happened. I, I don't know if it's my phone or what. I was asking if you were like the head. Uh, that is correct, ma'am. Um, due to the uh, misunderstanding or the uh, I we, I can understand that you're actually going through some uh, skeptical net that you are having in, in terms of receiving your prize. And uh, I'm going to try to be brief, and I'm going to try to talk so you can understand uh, how the, uh, the process goes, all right? Okay. Now, due to the fact that you're actually um, receiving a certain amount of money, there's certain protocol. Whatever we deal with uh, different departments, if we're dealing with the customs, they got their own policy. 
policy. You have your own policy. We are only in the middle. We're the company. Mm-hmm. Their their uh, policy that they are that they already have for years ago. They're not going to break for just one kept individual, which is you. So we have to follow protocol. It's not something that we are having control over. I can't just say customs. I need you to broker your, your your policy that you have for 19 million years or 17 years or 20 years just to suit my client. They will not do it. You understand? Yes. So in a sense, what we're trying to have you understand is when we are the company, we work with other departments because we do shipment prices, cars, tech, et cetera, whatever it is. We have to deal with government initials sometimes. Sometimes it requires a certain, uh, they request us for a federal regard stamp. They request us for, we can't tell them that we're not going to do it because of the amount of money that we're moving from state to state or country to country. We have to follow laws and protocols. So, even if you're having doubts or you're being skeptical about the situation, we can only understand that you're having skeptical or you're being skeptical. But at the end of the day, they're not going to break their policy just to please you. So we're trying to have you understand, as a matter of fact, if you're having doubts about the situation, that's the big red flag that's a failure. Because you're not going to want to pull through anything that you're told because you're already doubting the situation. So my word to you is, this is a large amount of funds. The protocol, everybody that works at the company, they got a nice house. They got a nice business. They got second businesses. They have cars. They have everything. They're not trying to rip you off on a few dollars. We run a big organization. You have to try to understand that we're doing this for you. It's not for us, all right? So when you're giving us the runaround, we're not saying that you're not supposed to be deaf. But at the end of the day, you got to understand these are not just some uh, fast food restaurant where you can go and they, they have special. It's, this is business. You understand? Yes, but the you're talking to me. You're a bit of an asshole, I think. No, I'm not being an asshole. I'm just having you understand that this is not something that we can just uh, shift just to suit your needs. It's the, everybody that runs the company, they have their own policy. If I ship something to customs and they're saying, okay, you're requested to pay this. I can't go to customs and tell them, okay, release it and then I'll pay you after. They will not do it. So it is a sense where you're telling us to do something that is impossible. Well. Because we do not run the customs organization. So you're saying that I'm being, you know the reason why you're telling me that I'm an asshole and I'm being, because I'm being frank with you and you, you know I'm being frank with you, but for being frank with you or for you to have a better understanding about what's going on. Because it's not being suited to your needs. You're saying that I'm an asshole and I take that very personal because you're being disrespectful right now. Sir, it was meant to be personal. You're you're talking like an asshole. I'm, I'm sorry to say it, but that's the word that comes I'm to my mind when I like listen to asshole. you. I'm just, I'm just talking back and the truth is going to hurt me at certain times. But I will be talking the truth and you might get upset about hearing the truth, but that's just the way well, I've been head. working for this company for years. Everybody respects me. Every client that I have dealt with, they honored me. That's the reason why I'm in the position as a, as a manager here, big manager. So it is something that I do well. And the company pays me well for that. So if you want to be disrespectful, I am never disrespectful from I've been on the phone. I've never called you name. I've never tried to not understand you. First of all, I laid it out to you. I said, I totally understand your concern. But you got to understand that these departments, they got their own policy and they're not going to break it for your, um, uh, you know, know, doubts that are happening. So we just got to try. The only thing that we can do is try to have you understand respectfully. And if you're a respectable individual, you're going to say, okay, uh, you know, I understand the situation that you're saying and whatever. You're not going to tell me that I'm an asshole because I have never humiliated you. I never speak to you as if you're Hi, Mr. Wolfer. I'll, I mean, I'll do. Uh, yes, this is Mary Ellis. Uh, is this Mr. J. Edgar Hoover? Uh, yes, ma'am. How are you doing? How can I help you? I'm fine, Mr. Is everything Hoover. okay? No, it is not okay. Mm. Um, I was supposed to collect my prize today, and now they're telling me um, that there's some holdup, and it's uh, Mr. Bentley stuck at the airport, and, and I wanted to just take this check that I have for Mr. Howe and just drive it down to Lady Lake, because it's only about an hour away, mm-hmm. and deliver it. Mm-hmm. And and now they're telling me that he's not at home, that he's at the office, but I can't send it to the office. And I, it doesn't make any sense that I can't send the check to the office. Office. And then a man got on the phone with me, the head, Mr. Brown, <clears throat> and he is mean, just mean as a snake. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, who are you? Who are you, Mr. Broccoli? Who is representing? I have no what idea company? who this Broccoli is, company is. What about Mr. Bentley? Where is Mr. Bentley? He was there with Mr. Broccoli. He handed the phone to Mr. Broccoli. Okay. We are there now. I don't, they said they're at the airport. Uh, do you know the name of the airport where they are? No, I guess it's the one in Orlando. But I asked, he said he was going to the hotel, and I asked him what hotel, and he said he couldn't remember. That doesn't sound right. That sounds fishy to me. Okay. Do you 
do you mind if I uh, if I make some calls and and uh, and get some information and call you back? Do you mind if I do that for you? Okay, that's fine. Thank you so much. Sorry to yeah. trouble you. Let, yeah, yeah. Let me call. I'll make some calls. Don't, don't worry about it. I'll call okay. and uh, I'll call you right back. Just okay. Answer Thank my you. call when I call. Is uh, okay. All right. Give me a minute. Okay. Bye bye. All right. Bye bye. <laughs> Hello. Hey there, uh, Mr. Mm-hmm. Lufer here. Um, yes, yeah, sir. Okay. All right. So they, uh, all right. So they, um, they are at the Gainesville Regional Airport. Northeast. Gainesville. Yeah. Why would they be there? Uh, well, that's where they said that they're coming from. Um, I talked there. I talked to them at the uh, the customs. The the situation is this. Um, okay. So the um, the check that he's coming with, the the check is actually eight point five million dollars. Mm-hmm. And um, the airport, all customs airport actually work under have to um, follow in, get instructions from the Federal Reserve Board. Um, the the check was released, and they uh, Mr. Mr. Um, Bentley was actually coming with the check, but there is no documentation. There is no invoice. This is how the airport works. Mm-hmm. If you're coming through with a certain amount of money or a check, you have to have an invoice of a shipment. If you're doing a shipment, you have to have an invoice for that shipment. If it's coming in as cash or a check, which no cash supposed to be coming through, unless it's just some small amount. But once it's actually amount, a certain amount, it's not supposed to come through. If you're coming through with a check, it has to have some documentations to show that this check is for something legal. Now, he's coming through with a check that is $8.5 million. He doesn't have an invoice. He doesn't have a documentation. Uh, the documentation that he's supposed to be receiving um, is from the Federal Reserve Board. He didn't. He don't have it. So he told me that he actually told them that they could have. He could have traveled with it, and you know, um, whatever um, uh, payment from for the government approval stamp, uh, maybe by that it would have been uh, delivered to them, and then they could be able to do whatever. But it didn't happen. So um, as I said before, the reason why they hold him is because of that. You have to have some documentation that means you're you're doing illegal stuff. Well, you would um, think coming you would through think, with no documentation and no invoice. You would think the head of Rockley mm-hmm. would have known that what they needed if he's traveling with him. Um, well, I don't think Mr. Brockley is traveling with him. I think Mr. Brockley is just a representative, uh, representative that that at the airport, but he actually worked with the Federal Reserve Board. As I said before, that you have to the every customs actually have to follow instructions, certain type of instructions from the Federal Reserve Board. So you have people that work at the customs that all all that was hired um, under the Federal Reserve Board. So he. Uh, Mr. Brockley is not working. He's not traveling with Mr. Bentley. He's just there at the airport as a representative for the Federal Reserve Board. Um, oh. So he's not traveling with him. Yeah. Um, another thing about it too, they have to know this, and this is the reason why we represent these companies. They have to know this. When you're moving money in public places, uh, these type of monies are illegal. Rather, it's coming from a legitimate company, a licensed company. Once you're traveling with money in public places, a certain amount of money, and I'm going to tell you, it's over. It once it's over ten thousand dollars. It is illegal for you to travel with it. Now, he's not whether it's a check or it's cash. not a check, you have to have a count. But, sir, he's not traveling with he's the not cash. Traveling he's with cash. traveling with the check. There are no laws no. against traveling with the with check. With a check. Uh, it depends on the amount of money. If, it's actually, if you have to come through the customs with it, they're going to hold on. on it because that, that's doesn't care about a check. Sir, that's, 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 they that's do, crazy. They do care. They do care. Trust me, they do care. Um, I can tell you this. I've actually talked to uh, a person a couple months ago uh, that we were actually investigating because he, he's actually doing a shipment and this is a shipment that he's doing. He's doing um, herbs and spice shipment and the invoice that, we, that the customer has for that shipment, the amount of money that is coming through on the, on the check is not on the invoice. So once it's not on the invoice, you're, if you can give account how you're getting that money, it's illegal. Yes, but those are plans. Right? So, that, that, that's different. This is yeah. the check. There's no law against traveling with a check. No, it's, well, it's not a, a law in the public, but it's a law once you come coming to the airport with a certain amount of money, whether it's a check or not. Once you have to go through some form of business entities, it's a, it's a law. Um, and um, you come into a, a, a airport with your personal check in your wallet, if you you can be go through without. There's no problem because if you have not been checked, you can go through. It's no problem with that. All right? But he's actually coming to as a representative for a I don't believe company. that for a minute. There's no law against what, you don't traveling believe? with a check. Okay, so you're telling me this that you don't believe it. I'm telling you I don't believe it. I think they're lying to you. 
you? Oh, um, Mr. Bentley are lying because they travel with a check. I think or maybe you think that they travel with some guy. I think he's lying to you. I don't think anybody's holding him up at all. Okay. I think he might be a fake. Oh, uh, well, um, a he fake. Might of, be, he might be lying to, you, to but, both um, of us. Okay. Well, um, it's not about he, uh, Mr. Bentley is lying to us. It's about the uh, the representative of the company. Now, if uh, if if he's work, if I if he wasn't working for the company, I wouldn't know that. Um, if he are going, I, I talked to the Federal Reserve Board, so uh, it's a it's a definite truth that he's actually traveling. But I don't know why he would have been trying to lie to me I don't because know I either. talked to I them. Don't know because, who to trust at this point? Yeah. Can you can you send me? Can you text me a copy of your? Of your FBI ID. I think I'm going to try to verify everything I can. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So when you're asking me to do that, you're actually doubting me just the same as you're doubting everybody else. Yes, I, um, yes I am. I'm, a I'm FBI. playing it safe. I'm, I'm yeah, playing I'm it a, safe. Yeah, I understand. But you're you're trying to tell me that. You're trying to tell me to send you a FBI. Um, do, do you think it's illegal? Do you think it's uh, it's my policy to, to send you uh, uh, my um, my ID, uh, my no government ID? I have no ID. I have no idea. It's not. It's not. Not man. It's a uh, what I'm represent company that I'm representing. You have to get whatever information from them because they're, they're, they're the one that you you, you want the prize from. Now, sure. uh, me personally, are not supposed. Yeah, me personally, are not supposed to be giving you anything uh, uh, private um, or send anyone thing that actually to, to do with me because I am not the one that you're giving you any prize. Um, if you're getting some information from the company or anything to show that you they're real or they're not real, it's supposed to be coming from the company, not me. I'm just a representative. I'm a representative of the company. And it's up to me if I decide that, okay, let me prove to you or send you this, which is uh, which is not something that I'm supposed to do. But if you're having doubt in the company, you can go ahead and do that. But you can't have doubt in me and decide that I'm supposed to be sending you information from me, from me, just to make you feel comfortable. It's not my, it's not the policy of what I'm supposed to do. It's the uh, company that's can, supposed to do all of that. Can then. you explain why the phone number you gave me uh, uh, the other day is saying it's disconnected? Which number? Uh, um, it started with uh, let me find my paper here. Hold on. Uh, oh, no, I can't find it. I think it started with a three. Um, oh, three five two. That's what it started with. My 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 cell phone. Yes, the one that gave me the my cell phone is not been disconnected. Well, when I call it, yeah, it says it's not been disconnected. disconnected. It just it's not disconnected. Um, I use it before I. That's what the, my personal number that I gave to you, and I I leave with the, that phone uh, when I came to Washington, and when I got here, it wasn't uh the sir it wasn't in any service. So I decide to just turn it off and put it down because it's not working properly. So I actually decide to use another phone that I have that I always use when I'm in in, um, in Washington. All right. Um, there is nothing happens to my phone. Um, it's not disconnected. I'm sure about that. And it will it will work as soon as I get to the area that I think it will be able to pick up. It will work. Uh, it my phone work is not working. In the area working, where you are now, it's not working. Um, mm. As when I when I got at the airport, it wasn't working there, and and I was gonna call uh, my phone company to find out why it's not working, but I. I said, okay, let's just forget about it. Yeah. Um, I have more than one phone, so I can always use another one. All right, yeah, but it's not disconnected. Yeah. And let me tell you, Mrs. Um, Ellis, I am, as I said before, I, I work for a long, long time with what I do. And, um, and the company that you're receiving your prize from, it's, if this was an illegal company, I would have known about it. Impossible to be illegal, anyway. Um, but I can't guarantee you. A person, or, or I can't tell you that a person that are uh, working for the company, I can't tell you because I'm not God, I'm not the Almighty. So I can't tell you that, okay, that person may not lie, or that person may not do this, or that person, I can't tell you that. But I know the company I represent, it's a legitimate company. It's a corporation that I work with for years. So it's it's, uh, it's a legal company. As I said before, I can't swear for an individual, for any individual I can't swear for. But I can swear for the company, right? Because I've been working for them for so many years, all right? But um, I'm just letting you know that. And um, if you're if you're having doubts, I understand. I do understand that people having doubts because the, their policy that the government works with, and sometimes it might show a little a way that it might look like, okay, this is a red flag, but it's not a red flag. It's just what how the company works. We have some issues um, eight years ago. Um, you usually have people just like you that won prizes. They won the prize. The money was sent to them, just normally sent to them. Like they have received their rights, whether it's a designated transfer to a bank account or anything. Else. And um, what they normally do is that they were supposed to cover their taxes and they, they did not. A couple of, I'm, I'm talking about it happens for years. People just keep receiving money, not paying the government, not paying taxes. They move to different countries and send their money to this account and so forth. No, this is the IRS we're talking about or the government and they don't play with their money. So 
So they decided that most of these companies that raffle, that do raffle, International Gaming Commission, Mega Million, all these type of sweepstakes company have to sign some agreement with them. And this is the reason why we're here, where we, um, everything is here going on right here, because it never usually be this way. But because of the government and the IRS side that they have to sign some contract with these company and they have to abide by it. So it's actually, uh, it actually something that goes through the court and signed off and one will be agreed on it, all right? That are any individuals that won any prizes at all, they have to cover the federal uh, stand before they can actually even receive the check. Seems a little way at times at first and... Um, just because the government was trying to close these uh, company down, they don't do it. So they have to just abide by it and they work with it. There are people that want money and at times they can do whatever the government does want them to do or the IRS want them to do. What do you think happened? They uh, they just sign it up as unclaimed package or unclaimed prize and it just go back. The government get half of that money. Once it's an unclaimed prize, the government get half of it and half of that money go back to a real raffle, all right? So I'm telling you, there are certain people and there are a lot of people who won prizes and couldn't afford to take care of the approval stamp what they wanted to take yeah. care of and they signed it up as unclaimed. And I'm telling you this, as a person that work for the government it's it is it is not good to do that not a good idea but what we have to do we just have to abide by it because right. they are the government because they are the government they do things that make you want to scream out and you have to hold it inside you know because they are the government so i understand yeah i understand uh feeling like you yeah understand so i understand that. now you understand that yeah exactly and that's not a so good what they're doing i'm not telling you that it's good i can tell you things that you would be going crazy if i tell you certain things but i just can't disclose it to you i you i work for this company i work for multiple organizations as i said i know i know almost everything about what's going on in, um, in the government with these uh secret societies and fbi's and everything i know everything i work here for so long and i can tell you things that make you go crazy but i can't disclose it to you these type of things that are going on and you win you won a prize i can tell you that they don't care if you, if you receive it or not because the government know that they're receiving half of it if you've actually unclaimed it they receive half of it if you if you don't unclaimed it they only get a a certain percentage so they say that they rather if they have you unclaimed it because they would get at a half of it right oh. so i am telling you this this is a this is crazy i'm telling you mrs Hallett, and i want you to understand that that uh sometimes it might seem a little red flag towards what the company are doing but mm -hmm. it's just how the government want them to to go about it and if they go about it that way then it makes you can feel a little skeptic about it and make it seem like a red flag and then you say you know what i don't want it yeah, and then they stand up as unclaimed and they get half the money all right. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I want you mm -hmm. to understand the certain things that you're doing here. It's not good. It's not good. It's not good. I can tell you that now. But I, I will into most people that I talk to. Um, I, I, I try to explain certain things to them, let them understand how the government works and how these companies have to work under the government because of what they require. And all because of, you know, you know, they say um, the good have to suffer for the bad, something like that, is that people don't know the government and they think the government is a joke thing. It's not a joke thing. The IRS is not a joke thing. You know, the secret society is not a joke. Thing. They know how to do things. And when they do this, when they, when you take their money, you get your prize and, you, and you're and supposed to give them a certain amount and you didn't give that. If it only, if it was one person who done that, they would have had uh, the rest of the United States, um, you know, responsible for it. Because what they do, they change their policy and they decide that, okay, this is what I want you to do. And if 10 person, let's say 10 person have it done, uh, 10 person actually go against them, then everyone else is going to have to, um, you know, get all of what the 10 person have done. That's crazy you know yeah and um and and, and but, but there is nothing i can do about it there is nothing that a lot of people can't do about it we just have to work with it but i as i said before i'm not swearing for any individuals but i'm swearing for the company because i know the company have to abide by these legal illegal stuff if you understand what i'm saying it's legal because it's a company is the government that actually set it that way but if you look at it as a person it's illegal mm, okay. right yeah. and i just want you to understand that so i'm, I'm swearing for the company because i know that i'm working for them for so long and represented them for so long but I'm not swearing for any individuals because individuals can do anything that they want to do you know whatever they might tell them to do you know and um and what do you what why, why, why um the reason why I hey, talk to I you, ask you you know the reason why I talk minute. to you hold is because can you hold on just a minute hold on can yeah I can back? yeah all right okay 
Uh, are you there? Hello? I'm still here. Yes, yeah. thank you. I, yes, I'm still here. Can you hear me? I'm sorry. Yes, I'm sorry. Oh, you're welcome. Waiting. I, um, mm-hmm. I went out to the mailbox mm-hmm. and That's got okay. the check. That's okay. I didn't want to take any chances of the mail uh, coming and, and, and picking it up until I'm, until I'm sure. Okay. Okay. So, um, as I said before, is that the reason why I talk to you, um, because there are a lot of people that I talk to, um, but maybe not the way I'm talking to you. I just talked to them for a few minutes or, and then that's it. Um, it's because that I, you're a skeptic and I know, and mm-hmm. because I know that I try to talk to you because I want to understand the policy of the company and for you to not to throw away the prize that you're getting, because I know skepticism can be good and it can be bad. So because mm-hmm. you don't know the rules of the company and you don't know how the company government is working, you might not know. So I have I wanted to explain certain things that you really don't understand so you don't give up on it you understand mm-hmm. alright this is how they have to work with something um, if you know about cyber uh, they have scamming going on about cyber scam what? people that know how to act cyber scam cyber uh, people that use computer to just um, yeah what mm-hmm. they do is that they act into your computer daily base any company at all and they can stole information from these companies and they can use those information against uh, people or um, whose whatsoever information they got they can use it what they did is that it get the company so frustrated that the company does know doesn't know who to trust. They should trust employees or not because they sometimes they think it's maybe it's an inside job. So the company kind of whenever they have a winner, they sign off like a group of people. Like it can be three, it can be four person, and those four person has to be the service provider for that specific. One. In that case, if anything should have gone wrong, if you understand, those three person or those four person has to be held responsible because if you're gonna let a company, if you if they're gonna allow you to able to talk to anyone that call you and represent saying that they represent the company then you can be in trouble because if anything should have gone wrong then they don't know how to who to point fingers on right so they try to make four or three persons can be five person too yeah. uh, um, trying to undo uh, that specific winner's um, documents so anything should have gone wrong they had they know who to point fingers on that's the best that's a good way to, um, so they what they do is that um, they do it they deal with individuals that maybe work for a bank bankers that work for banks they work for the bank, but they work for the company uh, as a side job. So if anything should have gone wrong, that specific banker is going to head responsible. Once, if anything, let's say you put out something um, and and it missed, you know, something happens to it, or or you said, okay, I made this payment, and and um, the company said I didn't get that that payment. Who who's uh, who's your service provider? Who is your banker? Um, okay, um, Desmond McKenzie is my banker. Okay, so who do you point fingers on? On Desmond McKenzie, you have to point fingers at him because he's the specific one that they put on to be your banker so whatever payments you go you paid has to go to a specific banker and sometimes the banker is just a person that worked for the for a bank but he's working for the company as um as like a contra uh, banker right that's really how they have to do it now because of the fraudulent activities that's going around in this world and in this company there's companies that have been hacked five ten times a year by these cyber fraud individuals and you know and sometimes i think that maybe the system are creating a, a way for these people to to do it because everything that they do they do it in a way where you can where it can be hacked now why why you want to do that if you're dealing if you're doing this if you're making a system why you can't do it in a way where it can be hacked why you have to do it in a way where it can be hacked so you know um some of these companies have been hacked like for the year and all these information have been sailing up and so and everything so they have to run the company a certain type of way um where they can actually point fingers on, on people that they think that um that they, they have to point fingers on someone but they can't let the whole company be a part of it like if you call a, a toll-free number it can be answered by anyone no if it has been answered by anyone that means anyone can be able to tell her, okay yeah ma'am go ahead and make the payments when you make your payment the company doesn't know anything about it who to blame they don't know who to blame because there is a toll-free number anyone can call can answer to it so they try to to make a sign agent like a, a group of people that just work for this, this specific person so they can be able to know what they're doing and they can handle it from where they are and that's what they're doing so that's the reason why you have um, Kevin McAllister you have Mr. Bentley and I think you have one more person I don't remember who the Mr. person Broccoli, is Mr. Um, Broccoli that actually assigned I don't well I don't think he's a, he's assigned to it at all I, I, I there's one more person that I think assigned but it's not Mr. Broccoli I think um, I forget the name but I know those specific persons Mr. Uh, Mr. McAllister and Mr. Uh, Bentley was assigned as one of your as a, as a service provider for you. I know those two. 
I know them. Um, I know Mr. Bentley uh, personally because we went to a meeting before uh, with the company and he was there at the meeting. So I know him personally. Um, Kevin, I have actually never met him before, but I talked to him a couple of times regards to, you know, because he's uh, with the, with um, with Morgan Stanley and so forth. So I know, kind of know him, not personally, but I talked to him a couple of times and so forth. But I just want you to understand that this is how they do it. And this is the reason why they do it. And they're not doing it because of, they're doing it because of the company, the government want them to do it a certain type of way. And they are doing it because if they have been hacking, people have been hacking their, their computer database so they don't know who to trust. And they're trying to sign a certain the way that they're doing it. They're doing it that way to kind of get rid of those type of situation, right? And that's the reason why I decided that uh, when they told me about you, I said, let me talk to you because um, I think I can help you out by having you receive this money. Because I, as I said before, I see a lot of people that come around and won prizes and didn't receive it because of the government policy and the rule, you know? And it yeah. kind of hurt me inside to know that that's, that's what happened. To see people lose their pride, their money, eight million, seven million, five million, two million, two and a half million. And those type of money, people can do so much with those money and they lose it because of the government policy. It's crazy, you know? And um, I, I always wanted to try to help out. As I said before, I am here for the United States people. I don't know who uh, is the government are. I don't know if the IRS are, but I know I am here for a reason. So I decided that I talked to a couple of people, but as I said, it's just for a couple of minutes. Um, I decided, let me, I don't know, there's a spirit inside of me just wanted to talk to you. And um, I decided yeah, to say, that's, uh, okay, that's when they said, I wanna, you want to talk to me? I said, okay, let me, yeah. I said, let me talk to you because there's just this feeling. I work off feeling, you know. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you this, if you do an investigation, you have to have a certain spirit inside of you because sometimes you don't want to go wrong when you're investigating. Right. You know, um, so you have to have a certain feeling, a certain type of spirit that you work with. And I can actually feel that spirit in me when I'm talking to you because I feel like I want to help you out. I want to show you certain things so you can understand the company that you won the prize from and understand the government a little bit so you can, you know, um, you know, you can work with, with me and you can understand what's going on. So I decided that I want to talk to you, you know, and that's the reason why I said um, I would love to meet you one day and if you get your prize, I would like to meet you and we can actually have lunch or dinner and I can give you so much downloads of so much things, you know, but there are certain things that I can disclose, but I, and I have to, I, I can't disclose either, you know, it's, uh, okay. it's my rules to do that. I understand. But um, I am here to help out. Yeah, I am here to help out and I will help you out. And as I said before, I'm just giving you to make you understand that once you, that's the reason why I told you that, listen, call me. And when I find out that my phone wasn't working that well, I decided to call you and let you have a number for me so you can always call me. Well, thank that's you. the reason why I do that. I did it because I want you to be able to, to contact me and let me know what's going on so I could guide you and I can help you out to do whatever to receive this money and you don't have to be worrying about you're going to have to, you're going to have any problem at all when you receive it. Because I guarantee when you receive it, you're a little excited and feel good about it. Oh yeah, I'm sure I will. You know, um, but yeah, I, I first you will, all right? Um, so I'm just here to help you out a little bit and guide you and to have your back on anything that you don't understand. And that's okay. the reason why I said, call me. If there's anything happening, anything come up, call me. Let me know. I'm not a busy man, but I have my phone. And that's the reason why I have a phone because the only thing that when you call and I don't answer, you think I don't know. I see it. I know. I always have my phone because it's, it's what I work with. I work with my phone. I get calls, hundreds of calls throughout the day. So I have to work with my phone. So whenever you call, if you call me and I and I told you that, oh, I was busy, I see the number calling, but I just couldn't answer it at the time, you know, because it's my phone I work with. So um, that's the reason why I have you tell you to have my number, you know, so in the situation you run into, I can hear you able to help you out. Oh, thank you so All much. All right. And I understand that, as I said before, I understand that you're skeptic. I understand that you're skeptic, but I'm here for you um, to help you get over that and let you know that, okay, this is how the company works. And I the reason why you're skeptic is you don't know how they work. And if I can explain to you to let you know, you can understand and you know that often. Please press six and wait for the beep. Uh, Mr. Hoover, this is Mary Ellis. I'm sorry, my phone cut off on the phone call before. Hello? Yeah, it's Mr. Bentley, okay? Uh, yes, sir. Okay, so uh, I'm going to have to go back home until everything is straightened out, all right? Uh, okay. Yeah, because uh, what happened, the company wanted to uh, get everything wrapped up quickly as possible, but we realized that uh, you're pretty holding, so uh, I, I, they sorry, said right that now. I should come back. On yeah. You're going to have to say that again. I couldn't hear it. I'm are you hearing me better now? Uh, yes, it just started breaking up as soon as you started are you talking. Hear 
All right, I'm actually saying that I'm going to have to go back home and let everything is sorted out, all right? All right. Right, because what has happened, uh, they thought everything would have went according to plan, so I could come to you, but I guess that uh, you're pretty skeptical about the whole thing. So they said that I have to come back home as policy until everything is straightened out for my own safety, all right? For your own safety? Right. Remember, I'm traveling with $8.5 million, ma'am. It's not like... Like, uh, you're thinking that someone is going to rob you or anything like that. But like, you can't just have a cashier's check, uh, you know, walking around with. So they said that I should come back home. Okay. Well, uh, I mean, you have to do what you have to do. Uh, that Mr. Broccoli, uh, he was uh, he was not very nice at all. He was he was steamed. Uh, like well, I, I I understand. Everyone is everyone is a bit frustrated. All right, so yeah, he was just I'm throwing, really sorry about his behavior. Throwing spears uh, at me like he was in boiling oh water or something. I don't know. Oh my God! Well, uh, sometimes the job can be very happy and difficult. So sometimes you just have to try and understand. I'm sorry about his situation. Does he so, work for the company uh, or does he work for the California. airport? Uh, does he work for the, the company airport? Or the he airport. He works for the what? airport. He works for the airport. Oh. All right. So uh, once I'm back in California, I will give you a call, and then we can try and straighten out things from there and getting uh, okay. a company. All right. right. Well, you do what you have to do. All right. Thank you. I'll talk All to right. you later. All right. So, uh, what time is it now? Four thirty. All right. Bye. Okay, I'll call you around seven thirty or so. All right. Uh, I might not be home at that time, but if if uh, if you if I'm not here, I'll call you back. Okay. Otherwise, it's going to be on Monday because tomorrow is Saturday. Okay. All right. So if we don't get to talk later, we'll talk Monday in the morning. Okay. That sounds fun. I'm I'm. Gonna Going to dinner with my friend Bert tonight. Okay. All right. I'll talk, talk to, you to you later. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Hello. Hello. Oh, Mr. Hoover. How are you? I am fine, thank you. I'm sorry. The phone just got, just went out. I don't know what happened there. Yes, my battery just died. cut off. It was my battery. I'm sorry. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm also sorry because I thought it was my phone. I'm blaming myself. <laughs> All right. Well, I, I just got your message also and then so forth. So I just want you to understand, you know, and so forth. And as I said before, um, today would be like a busy day for me. And um, I kind of take the time out to kind of talk to you. I just want you to understand um, uh, the procedures of the company and why, you know, sometimes you have to go through certain things. And um, uh, uh, me personally apologize for even having you have to go through so much, you know, because of uh, how they have to do business and so forth. But um, um, I I'm here. I'm here all the way. Uh, you, can, you can talk to me um, whenever you want to talk. You know, you can talk to me and I can, um, I will be here to, to, you know, to help you out and so forth to make sure that you get this money. I'm not going to uh, allow you, or allow this this money to to even be on claim so you don't get it because as I said before I see so many first people uh, um, won prizes and haven't received it at all and, um, and people that I that my spirit works and uh, works with I just rather to let them know what's 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 going on and what's the procedures and so forth so they can understand and not giving up on their prize and so forth all right okay um, right. yeah yeah but as I said but whenever you want to talk or you can talk and they, um, um, uh, well I'm getting off I, I think I won't be busy maybe by by six o'clock or so I will be available. Um but right now I'm just having some things I'm gonna have to um signed off on and so I haven't heated anything from morning. Not from morning. I hate something this morning. But um, yeah, I uh, that's that's the thing. Everybody warning me about it that I should try to heat something because it's gonna maybe <laughs> meet up with me later on in the future. But um yes, it's just I'm a out I'm a I'm a world qualic. I'm a world qualic. I, I work you know <laughs> Are you are you married? Um, so that's what happened. Well, I'm not anymore. Oh, not anymore. Yeah, I hope. I hope. Um, I'm I'm not the one. I'm not the one why I'm not married anymore. But um, I um, we can talk about that some some other time and okay. so forth. But um, that would be fun. Now, yeah, yeah. I am. Uh, I don't know if it's because of my job, which I don't think it's my job because I'm always trying to find time for for my wife and so forth. But um, uh, it's terrible. It's uh, twenty twenty uh, twenty one years. Uh, me and my wife was together for twenty one years. Oh my. Goodness. And then um. 
yeah, we uh, divorced that. Um, well, that had to be heartbreaking. Sad, so. uh, well, I tell you, to tell you, it's uh, kind of slow me down with my job. I uh, have to take time off of my job when I when I divorced. I have I have to take time off on my for one year. Oh um, yes, I before imagine. I could even start it, it's kind of heartbreaking. Because uh, um, I tell you the truth, um, I. Uh, I met him in high school. I met her in high school, and um, uh, she's been my friend. She's and she's still my friend, you know. Um, she's still a friend of mine. But I, because mm-hmm. we we haven't showed that away. Because she was my friend. She's my wife. She's my my everything. Because we actually met in high school, and um, I don't know things happen, you know. And, um, yes. Yeah, that's what happened there. So, <laughs> and it's uh, I sometimes I talk about it. Sometimes it's the same. But I'm the, the thing about it. I'm very glad that we are still friends. Oh, and yes, we still that's, talk that's nice. as, uh, and so forth. Yeah, yeah, because she has, uh, well, we had uh, three, two boys and one girl. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, and, uh, so we have to be there for, uh, for even though they're, they're grown, grown, uh, uh kid now, they, they're not any, they're not kid anymore. But the truth is, in my eyes, my, 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 my kids always been, I've been always be that, that little girl or that yes. little, you know, boy. Yes. I, yeah, it never seems old for me. It never seems like they grow up. They never, it never always seems like the same little boy or the little girl that I always play with and bring it on my shoulder. And, you know, that's how my kids are to me. That's how they are to me. You know, I go over the world for them. Yes, well, I bet the divorce but, um, is hard. But I, I, it's, uh, probably, what I'm glad is that when I had, when, the, when we divorced, uh, there was, uh, grown grown uh, kids at the time. There were grown people at the time, so mm-hmm. it never hurt them. It was like a um, teenage or, or maybe seven because uh, we're trying not to do that. Um, maybe when your kids are seven or eight or somewhere around that era, it's not good to be to for a divorce at that time. It kind of hurt your kids whenever you're divorced right. for them that young. Kind of hurt them. Yeah, so I'm glad that it never happened at that time, you know, so well, it hurts everyone and, and so forth. Yes. But um, I, mean, I get over it now. Um, as I said before, we talked all the time and so forth. So it's kind of still, it's okay because, uh, you know, if I never get a chance to talk to her again, then I think that I would be cutting across my mind now and then. But um, because we get to talk and so forth, and so I feel okay. So that's the good thing about it. You know? um, but yeah, uh, we can, uh, when, I, when I'm off, I can actually give you a call, uh, maybe like six o'clock or so, but if that's okay, if not, then we can talk some other day. Okay, um, well, I, I may go out to dinner yeah. tonight, so I might not be home, but, um, okay. but, uh, but I could be, uh, so just oh. let me know. Oh, no problem. I'll, I'll, I'll let you know. Okay. Yeah, right. I'll okay. give you a call once I'm available. Okay. That You're welcome, Mrs. Great. Alice. No problem. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Have a good night. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, but you too. All right. Bye-bye. All right, that's it for part eight. There's more to come. Please like and subscribe to help me keep this channel going. See you next time.